Okay, second to last discussion topic about Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, we're on to Nietzsche. I like Nietzsche. Um, you don't have to like Nietzsche, it doesn't matter, but it's an interesting perspective, and I always find it fascinating that, 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 that it's taken nearly over 2,000 years to get to the point where we can even ask about what constitutes the morality of the moral systems that we have in place. And right? so it's by Nietzsche's estimation, what we've been doing is largely anytime we build an ethical theory or a moral system, what we wind up doing is building it in order to sort of provide an apologetic for what we already believe to be good and what we already believe to be evil. Right. So on what basis right, can we say this is good and this is evil? Right? This is not a question that Nietzsche thinks that we've really sufficiently answered. Right? And he actually starts beyond good and evil off with this kind of criticism of traditional philosophy as a form of dogmatism. Right? It assumes its conclusion before it's entered into uh, the act of inquiring. Right? So it's, it, the example we might give is Kant, and Nietzsche picks on Kant quite a bit um, within what I've assigned you to read from Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil. And as Roderick points out of Kant, he's asking a very interesting kind of question. What Kant was asking is not, uh, you know, are there such things as morals, right? Are there some things as good acts as opposed to bad acts, right? What he's asking instead is how are these things possible? He assumes they're possible and then provides a system that explains on what basis they're possible, right? And again, to a certain extent in utilitarianism, we've already seen this too, right? What we call good and what we call evil are that which are either handy or not handy to us, that which tends to produce pleasure for the greatest number versus pain for the greatest number, right? And that's just what we call good and that's what just uh, we just call bad, right? Now, are these things good or bad in themselves? Right? Do we have a right to make that judgment? Right? These things never enter into the sphere of conversation. Right? So this is the general thrust of what Nietzsche is getting at and is beyond good and evil. We have to get beyond our own presupposition that there is such a thing as good and such a thing as evil. Right? Because as he tells us, basically every moral system that has been presented to us through the ages right, is just the subconscious or the, the unwitting metaphor, uh, the unwitting metaphor, uh, me memoir, that's the word I'm groping for there, um, of uh, the person moralizing. Right? He says, you're page nine, what, um, uh, what, morality, <clears throat> what morality is it he it is he aiming at? Thus, I do not believe there's an instinct for knowledge is the father of all philosophy, but rather that here as everywhere is a different instinct um, has merely made use of knowledge as its tool for anyone who scrutinizes the basic human instincts to determine how influential they have been as inspiring spirits or demons, goblins, will find that all these instincts have practiced philosophy and that each one of them would <clears throat> like only too well to represent itself as the ultimate aim of existence and uh, as the legitimate master of all the instincts. For every instinct is tyrannical as such, um, and as such seeks to philosophize. So largely, right, what we have built in terms of our systems of knowledge and our system of morality is really what 
we want to shape the world into and not some sort of you know instinct towards trying to figure out what is actually the case right this casts suspicion on the whole philosophical enterprise now as a small aspect of this suspicion um, I have presented you with this question right this this topic of discussion in discussing what Nietzsche considers to be falsely dubbed free spirits that's your page 40 Nietzsche claims of them what they're trying uh, uh, what they are trying with all their strength to achieve is a common green pasture of happiness for the herd with safety security comfort ease of life for everyone their two most often um, recited tunes and teachings are equal rights and compassion for all suffering and they take suffering itself as something that must be eliminated Nietzsche is clearly critical of this uh, this this tact and he treats suffering differently how would Nietzsche treat suffering and it, it, I've got a note there that tells you that this is an interesting reading <coughs> or an interesting discussion after we've engaged with utilitarianism which actually measures morality in terms of a lack of suffering or increase of pleasure which reductively treats happiness right now largely right what Nietzsche wants to claim of these free spirits who treat suffering as a problem is that they are what he calls levelers right um, page 40 bottom um, section 44 of um, the second book of beyond good and evil these falsely dubbed free spirits belong short and sour to the levelers loquacious scribbling slaves of the democratic taste and its modern ideas they are all of them people without solitude without their own solitude plain well-behaved lads whose courage and honorable propriety cannot be denied it's just that they are unfree and laughably superficial especially in light of their basic tendency tendency to see more or less the cause of all human misery and failure in the structures of society up to now thus happily managing to turn truth upside down what they're trying with all their strength to achieve is a common green pasture of happiness for the herd with safety security comfort ease of life for everyone their two most often recited tunes and teachings are equal rights and compassion for all suffering and they take suffering itself to be something which must be eliminated we who are the opposite we, who have opened an eye and um, and a conscience to the question of where and how uh, the plant human being most vigorous uh, has most vigorously grown tall we are of the opinion that this has always happened under the opposite conditions that precariousness of the plant situation had first to increase enormous uh, enormously and or, or that its power of invention and disguise its spirit had to become subtle and daring through the long periods of pressure and discipline that its life <clears throat> uh, life will had uh, to be intensified into the unconditional power will so basically what Nietzsche wants to argue is that suffering is part and parcel of the pressure cooker of life that begets human genius human ingenuity and everything with that we actually value as human beings right so where Bentham and Mill see suffering as a problem to be solved what Nietzsche sees is suffering as that which impels us to become more than what we are Right. so Nietzsche has a different take on suffering altogether and what I'm hoping you'll do um, with this question here right is to engage this position right to evaluate Nietzsche's claim that suffering is not something to be overcome it's something that well is inevitable in life and in fact something that to which we owe everything inspired or great 
in human beings. Right? Now, myself, I might just sort of use the trade example of uh, a degree. Right? Uh, the value of my degree is not the piece of paper, it's not the credential. You see two of them back there hanging on the wall. Right? Those were hard to get. Those were hard to get. I had to expand my capacities. I had to control myself. I had to sort of engage with difficult tasks. I had to become more than what I was. I suffered. At least one of my degrees, I worked through as my father was passing away. You know, these were hard things to do. They cause suffering, and if I were to adopt a morality that, and I'm sort of taking Nietzsche's line here, right, that tells me that morality itself forbades and is meant to eliminate suffering, suffering is the problem and a pleasurable life is the goal, that and that and my other two degrees wouldn't have occurred wouldn't have occurred. Think about what's valuable in your life, right? Think of that moment which you are most proud of in your life. And what you'll find is that it was a really difficult mo moment in which you rose to the challenge and not something that was just easy. Right? Anyone who plays sports right, and has really pushed themselves to overcome an obstacle or to become more than what they are, understands Nietzsche's position. Right? So it's not suffering that is the problem that needs to be eliminated, but rather suffering that forces us to become more than what we are and leads to those meaningful aspects of our existence as human beings. Right? So there's there's sort of a smattering of Nietzsche, and um, I don't need you to, to, to agree with them. I just want to hear what you think, all right? So it um, should be an interesting discussion. Cheers.